Welcome to the Hello Foundation's 15-minute podcast, The Strategic Cohort, showcasing educational administrators answering five questions related to their current position. We talk with educational leaders across settings and across states. Our objective is to share thoughts and ideas between professionals at a time when leaders can often feel isolated. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Strategic Cohort. Sean, if you don't mind to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your current position and uh, your current role within that. Okay, I'm the superintendent of schools with the Howard Winnesheek Community School District. Uh, We're located in rural northeast Iowa. We're the third largest landmass school district in the state of Iowa. We're 462 square miles. Uh, We've got 1,300 students. And we're in the second year of a uh, complete one-to-one deployment so that every student, kindergarten through seniors in high school, uh, has a digital device. Uh, We used our kids to help uh, determine what devices to use. And so kindergarten through sixth grade, they all have iPads. And seventh through twelfth grade, all have MacBook Airs. Uh, Along with that, we've got Apple TVs into all of our classrooms. Uh, We have a strong partnership with Northeast Iowa Community College, who is uh, assisting us with advanced manufacturing, robotics, and computer programming. And, uh, yeah, it's just a great job. This is the second district that I've uh, led in a uh, transformation of deploying technology. That is incredible because it's really where we're going in the future, and it's going to give kids such an edge to really break out of what the traditional classroom has looked like. Well, you know, the, the thing of it is, um, uh, you know, a digital device in the hands of a kid, it levels the playing field. And, you know, one of the things that we focus on is moving away from a 20th century factory model educational system. And we are presently dreaming of what a 21st century educational system of teaching and learning needs to look like. And, you know, in rural Iowa, we're facing declining enrollment and funding challenges. So what's really exciting is that we've got, besides Howard Wynn, there are three other school districts, all rural school districts, that are looking at, um, well, we've we've synced up our high school schedules for next year. We're going to have the same school calendar next year. And um, so that you and I could be taking Spanish but be on different campuses at the same time. That's really impressive. Now, what's in this current role, what is the greatest challenge that you faced, either with the technology transition or implementation or academically? Well, uh, it's kind of all the above. Um, You know, one of the things uh, our biggest challenge has been is uh, not with the parents, per se, because they understand that the world has changed. And and again, we're an agricultural-based community, so... Uh, technology is just, um, you know, it's just what, what agribusiness is all about. But our biggest challenge uh, has been retooling teachers and providing them with the skill sets to use this technology. And, and then also, when the kids are off campus, being able to access the Internet via broadband. Uh, broadband accessibility in rural areas, um, I mean, that's a huge challenge. Um, the other challenge we get is, is actually from, you know, traditional educational systems, uh, teacher prep programs, uh, Department of Ed. You know, we're in our second year of a one-to-one deployment. And again, we're, we're in rural northeast Iowa. And, uh, you know, we can track when we have snow days and the kids can't get to school. Uh, we can track that, you know, 70% of our kids are still online talking with teachers. Wow. And so I've asked our Department of Ed if we could get a waiver for snow days, and, uh, well, they keep telling me they'll get back to me on that. <laughs> it's so frustrating. There's, uh, we face the same thing in my, in my district when we're looking at implementation. Equity is a huge concern about kids having access once they're home. Well, and, you know, the other thing of it is, too, I mean, a lot of folks question why we provided every kid a device. Well, um, you know, the thing I tell them is it's a choir road. And what we, we're in our second year, and what we have found is that if every kid has a device, it doesn't matter. I mean, the old tags of special ed, talented and gifted, they all melt away. And what we've also found is that age, you know, the 20th century educational system clusters kids by chronological age. 
And what we're finding is that kids with passions and strengths, uh, it doesn't matter how old you are. I mean, we've had, you know, 17 year olds working with 12 year olds on various projects. So, I mean, oh, it's that's fantastic. It, this is truly transformational. That is so exciting. What would you share as an excess, a success you've had in that you definitely feel like if I retired tomorrow, this would, this is what I could hang my hat on. Well, I, <laughs> there are many, there are many, but, uh, the one I, you know, a couple of them that come to mind, uh, I had, uh, two seventh, uh, excuse me, two eighth grade boys that hated school last year. They hated school. Hate, hate, hate. <laughs> uh, but they were, they were avid bow hunters. And, uh, you know, so these two boys, uh, they both use compound bows. And so, uh, the whole second semester, they designed cams or pulleys for their ends of the compound bows, right? Wow. And so they, you know, you talk about geometry, you talk about design. Oh, yeah. So uh, the last day of school, the boys had it all figured out and they, they made them on our 3d printers, these new cams for their bows. And so I saw them at the beginning last fall and I came back and said, so how'd that, how'd that work for you? And the one boy winks at me. He says, you know, he says, I can put an arrow through a three quarter inch sheet of plywood now. Wow. And uh, now what they're doing, they said the, the problem was, is they were making, making them out of plastic and they kept breaking. So we're, we, uh, with our community college, we have access to a, a CNC milling. Mm-hmm. And so now they're going to try and make those cams out of metal. Oh, that's fantastic. But I've got, I've got, I mean, you know, fourth graders, uh, you know, in, in rural Iowa, the big thing is we're not too far from uh, the John Deere works in Waterloo and the building of robotic tractors, right? Yeah. And so we've got fourth graders right now that are learning how to write code. And with their iPads, they can Bluetooth. Uh, it's a little, they call them a spheroid. It's like a softball sized. Uh, and it's got like a gyro and a motor in it. So I've got fourth graders that are writing code, Bluetoothing to these little spheroids, and then having them run around the room and stuff. Oh, my gosh. That is so fantastic. And really, that is what I feel technology is, the tool that it's going to bring. It's going to really make re- learning relevant to our kids who necessarily questioned it in the past. Um, and there's no greater gift because kids will stay in school then. That's what you want. Well, I just finished on the plane reading uh, Tony Dance's book, I'd like to apologize to every teacher I ever had. And uh, I don't know if you've read that or not, but no. it's a very good read. Uh, the, the takeaway from it is, you know, our educational system as it is today, it is, it's flawed. It, yeah. it, is, it, is, it is 20th century factory model thinking. And, you know, it doesn't work with, you know, it doesn't work. It didn't, <laughs> it didn't work when I went through school. And it right. surely isn't working with our 21st century children right right well you're on the right track i'm a big believer in that what advice would you share with a new school administrator i think i think the you know the the thing you have to do is you have to get connected you have to be part of the conversation uh in my previous district um you know we we stepped out of the box it was a small school district just outside of uh, des moines which is the capital of iowa and we were surrounded by districts four and five times our size. And when I went there as a high school principal and then later as a superintendent, there was concern that our district would be swallowed up and that, uh, you know, we would cease to exist. Well, we adopted, because of that urgency of change, we adopted new thinking, which was to embed technology into instruction, which one of the first things we did is we uh, created a brand. And the staff utilizing Twitter and uh, Facebook we connected with educators globally. Uh, in fact, if you read Eric Schinniger's book, Digital Leadership, yes, uh, chapter seven is about Howard Wynn and uh, Van Meter, the two districts I was previously at. Oh, that's fantastic. And so, uh, you know, the team that I had, Van Meter, uh, Sharon, or excuse me, Shannon Miller, uh, Darren Durflinger, Jen uh, Sigrist, our tech person, Mike Lindy, um, I mean, we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. We were able to go out and connect with thinkers, and and, and so, and I guess the moral of that story is in Van Meter. It's no longer been the fear of 
uh, being swallowed up. It's become, you know, in Iowa, the gold standard of what 21st century learning needs to look like. Absolutely. When I left there to go to Howard Wynn, where I'm currently at, uh, Darren moved up to the superintendent's chair, and I just saw him recently, and he said that the district has grown. In fact, uh, one out of four students in Van Meter are currently open enrolled from those uh, bigger districts. That's great. Um, here at Howard Wynn, uh, all of the staff are on Twitter. And if you follow our discussion thread on pound sign 2020 Howard Wynn, um, the classrooms will become transparent. I was I actually looked at that Twitter feed and yesterday and I was really impressed. I just thought, wow, this is really taking education by the horns and directing it the way you want it to go. The the, the thing of it is, uh, it has to start with the superintendent, and and the superintendent has to be on the same page as the school board. Uh, the thing I see is there's so much frustration with individual teachers across the country that want to do things, but they they don't have somebody flying air cover for them. And so, again, as a, as a new administrator, you've got to reach out, network with other folks, um, be transparent to the community, and, uh, I mean, great things will happen. Absolutely. One of the challenges we've had is we're – transitioning here locally is we have teachers that are very excited. We talk a lot about Bloom's digital taxonomy and how we're going to uh, really raise the bar by giving more creativity. And teachers have said, I want to do that, but I don't know how to get there. I don't know what are the best tools, not hardware, but maybe software or the lesson plans. So we know that it's out there, that we just have to pull that information together and provide teachers the model that they need but you know what though too i mean we we want our children to be lifelong learners yeah and we want to, to, to and we want in my world our big thing is is to empower the kids into their learning and so t- teachers have been in a factory model so long that they're used to the boss coming around and telling them what to do and we've drummed out um, imagination and creativity and so i mean you know the the we've at, in the district I'm currently in, Howard Wynn, I mean, we the, the first year to prepare for the rollout, we had like Tech Tuesdays where teachers just told teachers on what they found. That's great. And uh, we were at our own ed camp, uh, ed camp Howard Wynn, in which when we did that, we had educators from three states coming in and sharing ideas. Oh, that's a great idea. But teachers have to take ownership in it. Uh, administrators have to... Uh, allow them the opportunity to grow and learn. If, if you think that you're going to bring in uh, off-the-shelf professional development to teachers and have it work in your own district, um, I, I mean, Maine has tried that, and it's not been very successful. I'm, I really appreciate you saying that because that is something we talk so much about, that they need the time, but what should that development look like? And it really, what you say makes a lot of sense. Well, when you talk about time, I mean, every time I hear the word time, I think of the factory model, time on task. I can't do that because it's beyond the contract hour. And I guess the thing that we talk about is that, you know, when you're a teacher, really, if you're a good teacher, you're a teacher 24-7. Right. And look at the teachers that put in time, their own time. Right. So we probably should move away from a uh, master contract that says you're, you're you know, you work your work day is eight to four and maybe embrace the modality and raise teachers to the level of of uh, doctors and lawyers where you're paid a salary and the time is yours to use so that you get the job done yeah i wholeheartedly agree with that well my last question is how are students different today than when you went to school <laughs> oh my goodness if, if you go to youtube <laughs> and do a search for howard Wynn. Uh, in the last 24 months, we've posted something like 80 plus videos. And I mean, you see what the kids are doing and they're engaged and they're happy. And, you know, part of our mission statement is connecting kids to their passions and their vision. Right. And so, I mean, if, if you were to come and visit me, we would go walk into classrooms and the kids wouldn't even look up and notice you. Wow. Um, and, you know, and again, because we're using online modalities, um, you know, When I was in school, if I had to turn in a paper, I turned it in for an audience of one, the teacher. Right. And now we've got, uh, I was in a classroom the other day, and I think you can find it on our our Twitter feed, but we had students 
that have been writing papers with kids in Russia. Wow. And so now, you know, if you're a seventh or eighth grader, you're not turning the paper in just to get the teacher off of your bag. Your turn. I mean, you're writing something. I mean, serious. Yeah. I mean, you're writing something that you're thinking, oh my God, the world's going to read this. Right. And so we were a, we were a district in need of assistance. We were on the NCLB naughty boy list. And, you know, in two years time, we've been taken off of that. Our reading scores have, have, have increased. Uh, our math scores have increased. And, uh, you know, we're heading in a good direction. But those state assessments, what we're finding is those state assessments, they're, they're 20th century assessments trying to measure 21st century learning. Absolutely. And I go back to the young man, the two boys that made the cams for their, yeah. uh, okay, when they take those standardized tests, right, they're like, this is a joke. They don't do well. Right. But yet, look at the skill sets. And if you're, a, if you're an employer, who are you going to hire? Someone that can come in and create something? Or someone that did really good on a dot to dot fill in the blank test. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, that is well said. Well said. And I I hope we can eventually uh, move past those standardized tests because I feel they're holding all of us back and freaking everyone out and teachers and you've got to take a, a deep breath. But that is what makes you, John Carver, such an amazing superintendent because you have that big picture and clearly are an exceptional leader. Well, uh, it's... It's it's it is it's my school board. Uh, they're the ones that have set set the course, and they've said, John, you know, go follow it. And you know, it's it's the instructional leaders I've got on my team right now today. Uh, our director of teaching and learning, Sarah Grimm. Our secondary principal, Tim Felderman. Our elementary uh, principal, Therese Jurgensen. You know, my my tech people. You know, I've got probably sixteen, seventeen hundred devices, and I've only got two tech people running the show. That's amazing. Uh, it's it's and but the thing of it is, um, it, it it all gets back to the teachers in the classrooms. I mean, they're the ones at, at Howard Wynn. Uh, I am so humbled to be around so many teachers that number one realize they've got to change. Uh, we're facing declining enrollment. Uh, we've had to close two elementary schools uh, because of that, and yet the teachers are. I mean, they're reinventing themselves. And, you know, I had a teacher yesterday tell me, she goes, you know, Mr. Carver, she goes, some days, you know, I teach the content to the kids, but most days the kids teach me how to use the technology. I mean, so how cool is that? That is fantastic. That is such, it, it makes me think of uh, the one uh, story that immediately comes to mind of my own staff. We hired a woman post-retirement or close to retirement, and she was someone who had done things the way they had always been done for quite a while, and we were introducing her to some technology tools and a different peer group that had a different standard, and she blossomed at what should have been or could have been the end of a, in a declining career. So, See, I, I'm, I'm giggling because, I mean... What we're finding is that age really doesn't matter. It is your ability to learn and, re I mean, yeah. So, I mean, again, it, I mean, there are folks, you know, I, I, Deb Day, uh, who is on Twitter, she's one of our English teachers. And, um, you know, she's a veteran teacher and she's a rock star. She's an absolute rock star. So age, you know, age doesn't matter. It's just... Do you want to be creative? I'm going to let you go, but I really appreciate your time. And uh, this is inspiring. I'm excited. I personally want to show up in Iowa and say, show me how this is done. I want to bring it back to my own school board. So, Well, well we stand ready to help anybody. And uh, to be honest with you, we, we believe that the, the things that are going on in Howard Wynn are on the same level as national security. Our country is at a crossroads. And the way forward is to reform our educational system embracing 21st century thinking and yeah you know we stand ready to help anybody anytime many thanks for tuning in to this episode of the strategic cohort we thank all of our administrative partners for practicing quality and putting kids first we are always seeking administrators interested in answering our five questions for this podcast if you would like to be a part of the strategic cohort please contact us at sharon.soliday.com at thehellofoundation.com. We always provide participating administrators a copy of the recording to share on their own LinkedIn profile.